Welcome to Environmental Politics in the American West, an EcoWest.org presentation. EcoWest's mission is to inform and advance conservation in the American West by analyzing, visualizing, and sharing data on environmental trends. This is one of six presentations that illustrate key environmental metrics. Libraries for each of these topics contain additional slides. You can download all this material at ecowest.org. In this deck of slides, we focus on two major topics, public opinion on environmental issues and funding for conservation. First, let's take a look at some polling on environmental issues, both nationally and in the West. Most of the slides that follow are based on long-standing surveys conducted by the Gallup organization. Some other polls examine the views of Westerners in particular, but they haven't been around for very long, so they don't say very much about long-term trends. Here are some of the key points on public opinion. The environment doesn't rank high in the public's agenda, but a majority of Americans remain concerned about a wide variety of environmental problems. The public agrees with many of the environmental movement's policy goals, but only about a fifth of Americans identify themselves as active participants. The Great Recession has shifted public opinion away from environmental concerns over the past few years. Air and water pollution tend to be the most worrisome environmental issues. Disasters such as the BP oil spill can cause spikes of interest in environmental issues. Who's in the White House can influence perceptions of environmental quality. The 2008 election caused more Americans to say things are improving. Americans remain split on global warming, especially along party lines, with a significant percentage saying the threat is exaggerated and will not affect their lives. Many of the questions that Gallup asks concern the overall state of the environment. Before we delve into public opinion on environmental issues, it's important to remember that the environment usually ranks low on the public's agenda. When Gallup asks Americans what's the most important problem facing the nation, only 1-2% to 2 of people will say it's the environment or energy issues. This graphic shows the public's ranking for June 2012. Although few Americans rate the environment as the nation's top priority, a majority has consistently said that they worry about the quality of the environment. Over the past decade, more than a third of Americans surveyed said they worried a great deal, and about a third have said that they worry a fair amount. This pattern hasn't changed much over the past decade. Nationally, fewer than 10% of Americans believe that the overall quality of the environment is excellent. A higher percentage rate the quality as good, but combining these two categories still accounts for less than 50%. Public opinion on this question has also remained relatively stable since 2001. Obama's election could also help explain why there was a shift in the public's outlook between March 2008 and March 2009. When asked to rate the trajectory of environmental quality, more Americans still think things are getting worse, but that gap has narrowed substantially after Obama took office and has remained relatively constant since then. A similar pattern exists if you look at the public's judgment of the president's performance on environmental issues. The share of Americans saying the president was doing a good job surged around 50 percentage points after Obama took office to about 80 percent, but it has since fallen to about 50 percent and remained relatively constant since then. Throughout the Bush administration, the public's rating of the president generally declined. Most Americans say they're concerned about environmental issues, but fewer than one in five consider themselves active participants in the environmental movement. About 40% consider themselves sympathetic but not active. The percentage of people saying they were unsympathetic to the environmental movement has risen slightly in recent years to about 10%, while the fraction describing themselves as neutral has climbed to about 30%. Some increasing hostility toward the environmental movement is also seen in this graphic. The percentage of people saying the movement has definitely or probably done more harm than good has risen since 1992, but overall a plurality of Americans say the movement has probably done more good than harm. <laughs> 
When asked about balancing environmental and economic priorities, an increasing percentage of people say that economic growth should be given a priority. In some polls during the 1980s and 90s, twice as many people said the environment was more important, but starting about 10 years ago that gap narrowed and eventually reversed. Gallup also asked this question right after the 2010 Gulf of Mexico oil spill and registered a jump in the share of Americans favoring environmental protection, but that spike appears to have been temporary. When pollsters ask people to weigh environmental protections against developing U.S. energy supplies, slightly more Americans now favor energy production. A decade ago, the situation was reversed. Note that all of these poll results were done in March, except in 2010, when another survey was conducted in May of that year. Environmental protection trumped energy concerns in that poll, probably because the Deepwater Horizon oil spill was in progress at the time. About half of Americans think that the government is doing too little to protect the environment, but in 1992 the figure was almost 70 percent. Over the past few years, there's been some increasing polarization on this question. The percentages of people saying the government is doing too little and doing too much has been increasing, while the share of Americans saying things are about right has been declining. The previous slides showed results from national polls conducted by Gallup. In this graphic, we focus on five Rocky Mountain states. When residents of Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and New Mexico were asked about balancing the environment and economy, the vast majority of respondents argued for maintaining environmental regulations. This poll from Colorado College generally found strong support for environmental protection, especially for public lands. In these five western states, some of them quite conservative, nearly 50% of respondents feel that environmental laws are tough enough but should be better enforced. Only 10% of people surveyed thought that environmental laws need to be relaxed. Let's focus on some specific environmental problems. Which environmental issues generate the most worry among Americans? This graphic shows that the level of concern for various problems has remained relatively constant over the past decade or so. Air and water pollution consistently rank at the top of the list, while extinction of species and global warming register less anxiety. This graphic shows what percent of Americans say they worry a great deal about a specific environmental issue. Generally, the lines tend to move together, although there are exceptions such as the jump in concern about water supply registered between 2001 and 2002. It's not clear why this happened. Compared to pollution, the issues of global warming and the extinction of plant and animal species tend to cause less anxiety among Americans. Here's another look at the data from 2008, when Gallup asked respondents about all of these issues in the same poll. Pollution and contamination issues worried a majority of Americans a great deal, but some issues that the environmental movement concentrates on, such as global warming and the extinction of plant and animal species, registered less concern, while some issues that the environmental movement has shifted away from, such as the ozone layer and acid rain, still cause plenty of worry among some Americans. According to Californians, air pollution is the most important environmental issue facing the state. A similar pattern exists in the West, where air and water quality concerns were the most frequently volunteered environmental problems. The survey of voters in five western states also revealed that non-pollution issues rank high in the region. More than 80% of Westerners describe poorly planned growth and development and the loss of family farms and ranches as serious or extremely serious problems. As with the national surveys, global warming and climate change are seen as less troubling than other environmental issues, yet more than half of Westerners surveyed still describe these as serious or extremely serious problems. Now let's take a closer look at climate change, an issue that looms large for the American West. Over the past two decades, Americans' understanding of global warming has increased. In 1992, only about half the country said they understood a great deal or a fair amount about the issue, but by 2011, 
That number had risen to about 80 percent. Gallup only asked this question a couple of times in the 1990s. About half of Americans believe that global warming has already begun, but over the past five years that percentage has declined by about 10 points. At the same time, the percentage of people who think global warming will never happen has increased from about 10 percent to nearly 20 percent. A majority of Americans now believe that global warming is primarily due to human activities, but that gap has narrowed somewhat over the past decade. In 2010, almost as many people said it was due to natural causes. While climate change has become a top priority for many environmental groups, land managers, and government agencies, most Americans do not think that global warming will affect them or their way of life. Today, about 40% of Americans think that the seriousness of global warming is exaggerated, and that number has been growing over the past few years. Still, about 30% of people think that the seriousness of the problem is being downplayed, and around a quarter say the media's portrayal is generally correct. Divisions in public opinion on climate change are particularly striking when the data is broken down by party identification. Since 1997, Republicans have grown increasingly likely to believe that media coverage of global warming is exaggerated. The same trend exists for independents and, to a lesser extent, Democrats, but this question has not been asked since 2009. Looking at the West, many residents also see the global warming threat as exaggerated, but about half of respondents believe that we should be taking action to mitigate the effects. There are still plenty of climate change skeptics, but a majority of respondents in the West support the U.S. EPA requiring reductions in carbon emissions from sources like power plants, cars, and factories in an effort to reduce global warming. Even in Wyoming, a state known for its coal resources, a majority of voters agreed with that policy. What elements of climate change cause the most worry? At least in California, the threat of wildfires, increased air pollution, and more severe droughts top Californians' concerns about the impacts of climate change. Let's move on to another important element of environmental politics, funding for conservation. Here are some of the main points. First, federal funding. In real terms, the budgets of major environmental agencies have been fairly steady over the past decade. The distribution among different programs also tends to remain relatively constant. Second, ballot measures. Open space bonds and other conservation measures usually pass at the polls, but considerably fewer have been put to voters during the economic downturn. Third, philanthropic. The distribution of funding by issue area may change significantly from year to year. Energy and climate related funding recently saw big increases. Our look at conservation funding begins with the federal budget. Much of the West is federal land, so the resources allocated to government agencies and their spending priorities can have major impacts on the region's residents and natural resources. First, let's examine the overall federal budget. As with public opinion, the environment ranks near the bottom when it comes to federal spending priorities. This pie chart shows where your federal tax dollars are spent using data from 2011. More than half of the budget is consumed by Social Security, Defense, and Medicare. Environmental protection and natural resources receive about 1% of the federal budget. There are a few other environmental programs in the other slices, such as clean energy development and conservation of farmland, but their share of the pie is also tiny. This chart breaks down that 1% devoted to the environment and natural resources. You can see that the big federal agencies, such as the EPA, Army Corps of Engineers, Forest Service, Park Service, BLM, and other interior programs, account for the vast majority of federal spending. Let's take a closer look at some of those agencies. The EPA saw its budget jump in 2010 thanks to the federal stimulus package. The EPA breaks down its spending according to five categories, and the allocation has remained relatively steady over the past decade, with water-related programs accounting for the biggest chunk. Here's how the Forest Service spent its money over the past 10 years. 
The blue bar is for wildland fire management, but sometimes bad fire years have forced the agency to rely on supplemental and emergency appropriations from Congress. Aside from fires, the next biggest category of spending is for running the national forest system, shown in green. The Department of Interior, home to a number of key environmental agencies, has also had a relatively constant budget over the past decade, aside from a jump in 2009. Here are the budget trends for some of those Interior Department agencies. All of them experienced a temporary spike in funding in 2009. Let's take a closer look at the National Park Service's spending priorities. The great majority of the agency's funding is devoted to the day-to-day -day operation of national parks, monuments, recreation areas, and historic sites. Over the past decade, construction has accounted for the second biggest share of spending. Like other environmental agencies, the BLM has seen its budget remain relatively constant over the past decade, except for 2009. The vast majority of its spending is focused on the management of the vast federal domain in the West. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service spends about half of its budget on resource management, which includes national wildlife refuges and endangered species. The agency also spends money on sport fishing, migratory birds, and aid for wildlife programs managed by states and tribes. The Land and Water Conservation Fund, LWCF, is another major source of federal funding for Western conservation. But over the past few decades, Congress has diverted more than half of the fund, $17 billion, to non-conservation purposes. Initially, the LWCF was funded through sales of surplus federal real property, motorboat fuel taxes, and fees for recreation use of federal lands. But today, most LWCF funding comes from the royalties that energy companies pay when they drill offshore on the outer continental shelf. This graph shows that about $900 million is deposited into the LWCF every year. But money that isn't appropriated by Congress remains in the U.S. Treasury and can be spent on other federal programs. Since 1980, Congress has diverted as much as 85% of the LWCF. Let's take a look at another important source for conservation funding, open space bonds and other ballot measures that are put to voters in state and local elections. Since 1988, American voters have approved nearly 1,800 ballot measures that have generated more than $57 billion for conservation. Funding peaked in 2008, when some $8 billion was approved. The average funding for conservation measure approved has varied considerably from year to year. Conservation measures generally do well at the polls, in part because backers tend to avoid placing them on ballots when the chances of passage are low, such as during a recession. The green line in this graphic shows the percentage of conservation-related ballot measures that passed each year. On average, 74% are improved, but in some years the rate has approached 90%. The number of measures tends to be lower in off-year elections and peaked in 2004. In recent years, with the economy in the doldrums, fewer measures have been placed on ballots. Finally, let's turn to environmental philanthropy. Foundations and donors are critical sources of funding for conservation groups, but there is only limited data available on spending patterns in the philanthropic sector. Our best source of information comes from the Environmental Grantmakers Association. EGA has conducted two studies in recent years of the funding priorities of its members, which include the major foundations. However, only some of this data is available to the public. This graphic shows the breakdown in funding by issue area for 2007. Here's the same data for 2009. Climate and energy issues jump to the top of funding priorities. You can see that even more clearly by looking at the change in funding from 2007 to 2009. There was a big shift from terrestrial, coastal, marine, and biodiversity issues to climate and energy. The previous slide showed the change in absolute dollars from 2007 to 2009. Here we see the percentage change. 
Some of the biggest declines were in population and environmental justice. The greatest percentage increases were for international trade and finance, energy, and climate. You can see that the funding priorities change a lot from year to year, unlike federal budgets, which tend to be fairly steady over time. Let's review some of the main points from this presentation. Environmental issues rank low on the public's agenda, but Americans remain concerned about many environmental problems, especially pollution. While Americans often agree with environmentalist policy goals, only about a fifth identify themselves as active participants in the movement. Hostility toward environmentalists appears to be rising, and the Great Recession has shifted public opinion away from environmental concerns over the past few years. Disasters such as the BP oil spill and presidential elections can cause big changes in public opinion on the environment, but they may be short-lived. Budgets for federal environmental agencies have remained relatively steady, but philanthropic funding priorities may vary greatly from year to year. Open space bonds and other conservation measures usually pass at the polls, but considerably fewer have been put to voters during the economic downturn. Thanks for watching this presentation. You can download it as well as other slides and entire libraries at ecowest.org. A number of leading experts on Western conservation serve as advisors to EcoWest. EcoWest is produced by California Environmental Associates. Please feel free to contact us if you have a question or want to make a suggestion.